Ladies and gentlemen, members and friends, it's April outturn upon us. It's coming, it's Friday 5th of April, where we release a whole slew of new casts to our members. And as always, I love to do these videos to talk to you about what's coming through, what's on taste, and what's being offered up in this outturn, including not just the single malt whiskies that we release, the single cask, single malts that cast strength, that are full flavored and panel approved, as we always like to say, um, but also some of the other spirits we come through, come through out turns like sometimes we see code A, code B, code C, code G, GW, R, all these other spirits that we do, which are fantastic insights into flavor of what the society does best. Now, in this case, this is a whiskey, but it's an RW code, so it's a rye whiskey, meaning the predominant part of the mash bill, 51% or higher, is rye. So rye is obviously a type of grain that is used to make whiskey and is uh, more commonly associated with that sort of peppery, spearminty, uh, you know, white pepper, black pepper, pink pepper kind of notes across the entire spectrum of peppers. And, and often a little bit sort of um, ruby-ish and rounded compared to other spirits as well sometimes. But this is RW3.3. I think, I can't remember the other RW3s we've had uh, off the top of my head. I am not as well researched on this one in terms of its history as I am perhaps other stuff. But what I can tell you about distillery RW3 is that this is a distillery located right in Brooklyn, right in New York. And this is a return to, to Brooklyn's distilling scene. There's been distilling in the Brooklyn region in America uh, since about the seven, early 1700s. Uh, this is a return to form in many ways because after Prohibition, all of these 50 something thousand stills that were in uh, even just New York were uh, closed down, of course. They were all illicit stills um, leading up to Prohibition. And this is the first new craft distillery since uh, Prohibition in Brooklyn. So they pride themselves on craft spirit. And I'm really excited that we've gotten through a single cast cast strength example of their rye and a five-year-old no less which is very old for them so most of the rye they put out is two to three years of age this is about twice that uh, being a five-year-old rye and fully matured in a charred new oak barrel so virgin oak a charred virgin oak as in how you mature a bourbon as well it's not bound by the same laws of under bourbon so you can play around with things a bit differently with rye and I don't know the exact mash bill of this one, but if I do find out, I'll pop it into Outturn for you all. For y'all. <laughs> I'm already, I can, I can start Americanizing some of my words for drinking American whiskey. It's immediately like, like leafy greens, black pepper. Um, but there's something else in there. It's like almost like a, a like a, like a beef, beef stew and like a, like, like wagyu pot, like um, like salted beef, uh, and like almost biltong note. Okay, biltong and beef jerky, teriyaki beef jerky note. But it's got that classic rye note as well. It's very, it's very, um, it's very whiffy. In, in, it's in like there's a lot of spirit power coming out of that glass, to, which yeah, it's 60.0 on the dot ABV, so natural cast strength on right on the head of 60. It's so great to taste. I actually one of the, I actually one of those people that think that American spirits, especially American bourbons and ryes, generally work best at a higher proof. Um, I, you know, it, tasting going back to chasing bourbon at 40, 37 to forty five percent ABV, it, they, they start to come across as a little bit like they taste really watered down, and they lose that um, really sort of like thick and um, oily viscous. Often I call it um, peanut peanut oil. No. The, a lot of bourbon that American spirits get. This has got a little bit of peanut oil going on it, which I, I do love. I used to get peanut oil in those old bottles of Henry McKenna and uh, Henry and Harry McKenna. Anyway, the McKenna, McKenna bottles, the old McKenna 10, really early bottles of Booker's, um, old, uh, early, early batches of uh, rare breed, things like that where you used to get these, that peanut oil note. And even when uh, asked the question to uh, the, the wild turkey boys and others about where did that peanut oil note come from? How do you get it back again? You know, how do you aim for the, that, that nose and taste of the spirit of old, old yesterday? The, yesteryears, I should say. And their answer is, we don't know. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, one, it's one of those chemistry mysteries. 
bit of time in the glass now and this is, is, is opened up nicely. Like I said, a bit whiffy and closed at the start. That's delightful. I'm just like, I'm picking up all those, those notes I mentioned. A little bit of a licorice note. Um, like cocoa and um, like chocolate popcorn is a, is a good, really good note. Chocolate popcorn note is just fantastic. Let's have a taste. Mm. Yeah, there's lolly gobble bliss bombs, but with like cocoa dusting on them, but not as sweet. That's a remarkably easy drinking whiskey. It works neat, and I would even recommend trying it, uh, trying that in a, in a rye old fashion. That would be a banger. All right, April Outturn, Friday, 5th of April. Uh, any questions, of course, about this whiskey or anything to do with Outturn or the society in general, just throw a comment down below in the YouTube comment section. We read all the comments, we respond to all of them. Well, those worth responding to, if you're gonna leave some nonsense, and we probably won't. But if you hit the subscribe button and the like button, then you can keep up to date with all the new releases that are coming through from the SMWS. In the meantime, Slanjava, however you are, wherever you enjoy it, whoever you are. <laughs> Cheers.